I recently made a champion fighter buff video, and here's one of the comments. That would not be balanced whatsoever. It's way too strong. Now I would appreciate the feedback to be a little bit more constructive, like why you think it would be too strong. But I admit that in the previous video that I make, I did not elaborate it very well. In the spirit of it being a YouTube short, I tried to make it as condensed as possible for people to just get the most value of it. But maybe I should make longer videos more often to include my reasoning. So here's a video explaining why I buffed Champion Fighter like I did. Hey, it's a change of pace. It's a more chill and relaxing video rather than just fast shouting video like I usually do. We'll see how it goes. Now back to the topic of the video. Here's a comparison of the buff version of the Champion Fighter and the Battle Master Fighter. The ability I added for Champion Fighter, uh, it's called Timely Critical. Basically, when we hit with a weapon attack roll, we can choose to turn it into a critical hit instead. And we can do that a number of times per short rest. If we just use a normal weapon and with no feet, turning a hit into a crit will add at most 2d6 damage if we use a maul. Because we already hit, critting is just doubling the dice. This is very comparable to Battle Master's maneuver. Maneuvers also reset on a short rest. They also add either a d8, a d10, or a d12 to damage on a hit. Well, they do different things too. We'll get to that in a bit. After doing the map, even after factoring in the improved critical of the fighter, which is the ability to crit on a 19, and then at level 15, you can also crit on an 18, it turns out that Throughout the adventuring day, the bonus damage from the buffed version of the Champion Fighter comes out at 139% of the bonus damage that the Battle Master Fighter gives. This damage calculation does not include the existing fighter damage from normal attacking, extra attack, action search and all of that. This is just how much damage does this subclass give. My calculation assumes 8 combats per day, 4 rounds per combat, and 2 short rests per day. It's a standard adventuring day that Wizard of the Coast recommends. It's also the calculation method that trained monks usually use, and I think that's reasonable. Just a note that if we have a shorter adventuring day, the number of combats, the number of rounds is lower, then the champion fighter will perform worse and worse in comparison to the battle master. Why? Because both timely critical and maneuvers are flat bonuses that can be reliably used up in a day. But improved critical from the champion fighter is a passive that provides more and more bonus damage the more the champion fighter attacks. So the champion fighter would perform better on a longer day, making more attacks. The battle master also has a rider effect on their maneuvers. So the damage boost is only half of the battle master benefit. The champion fighter only does damage, so it better do a lot of damage in order to make up for it. One may even make the case that the bonus damage of the champion fighter should be 200% or double the bonus damage of the battle master to make up for the utility. Now, champion fighter can get feats or have ally cast spells on them that gives a rider effect on the crits or just simply more damage. But that requires a lot of investment and coordination. And the battle master can also get feats that synergize well with them. So I think the buff version of the champion fighter doing more damage than the battle master is justified. Okay, I have one more calculation for us here. This one calculates the damage per round of the buffed champion fighter with great weapon fighting, the fighting style, great weapon master, and crusher. I think those three things are quite reasonable for a fighter to get and they synergize really well with a champion fighter in terms of damage. And I'm going to compare the damage per round calculated here with the baseline of Warlock Eldritch Blasting with Agonizing Blast and Hex, which is also a method that Trent Monk used. You may be able to tell that I consume a lot of his content. Regardless, here's the damage report. From level 1 to level 3, this character would only have Great Weapon Fighting and Great Weapon Master, assuming that we took custom lineage. We're also gonna get our strength to 17 from level 1, so at level 4, we can grab Crusher and get that to 18. As much damage optimization as possible here. I opt not to include the boost to our allies' damage from Crusher, 
as in uh, we give advantage to our allies when we create because there's gonna be a lot of assumption to make we don't know whether we have a very big party or a small party whether our allies make a lot of attack rolls or not I also assume that with the best optimization possible in combat we're gonna use action search whenever we have a crit in our first action to maximize the advantage so there it is the buff version of the champion fighter does about 75% above the baseline on average across all 20 levels not the most damaging build out there but this is certainly up there which is quite reasonable for a full damage build it provides nothing other than damage so it should be doing a lot of damage again I'm gonna refer to Jin Bong's usual statement of a full damage build should be able to do at least 50% above the baseline here he already did a lot of the work I just have to stand on the shoulder of a giant how convenient so that's my analysis of my buffed champion fighter it is balanced by itself it becomes good with beats and it could even become better with the right party that could make use of the crusher crit advantage the downside it only ever does damage crowd control option may remove or reduce the enemy's threat before killing it damage can only reduce or remove the enemy's threat after killing it in this balance homebrew series i try to make homebrew options that are balanced obviously flavorful and simple for player options in D&D 5e because if the power level of all the class, the subclass, the race, the feet that's quite ambitious and even more ambitious the spells if the power level of them are all equivalent whenever we make a character the flavor can come to the forefront of the decision making instead of having to worry about whether a build is viable or not I think that will be peak D&D because then the people who likes to play powerful character and the people who doesn't look too much into the nitty gritty mechanics of the game can play at the same table and they have characters at roughly equivalent power level if you enjoyed this longer video of mine here's another one where I nerd extensively about buffing the inquisitive rock I provide two buff versions in that video one more simple and one more flavorful